you are a representation of god's intervention yes he's a god who inter he comes he disturbs things he changes things praise the lord he changes lives and he has a great purpose for you the lord is quickening within us right from the prayer to remind you that god has a great purpose for your life praise the lord god has a great purpose for your life you know it, it, it's something that we can in the swamp of this world and these worldly cares and anxieties we can tend to forget that you are here to serve the lord amen you are here to serve the lord and accomplish the purpose of god in your life hallelujah don't be confused don't be confused you are here to serve the purpose of god in your life and that is success somebody say amen that is success to accomplish the purpose of god in your life yes there's a way that seems right to man the end of it is destruction yes but a man whose house is built upon the rock of god's word of obedience to what god is doing in your life that is success amen that is success so i speak to servants of god this evening I speak to servants of God this evening. Hallelujah. I don't know what other definition you've been flirting with this week. Great peace in knowing that you live to serve God. Thank you Jesus. The Lord had put this scripture in my heart so I'm going to read a few verses from Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Praise the Lord. Praise God. It's an incredible psalm. It's a psalm that it will do good for us to remind ourselves again. Encounter this psalm many times, yeah, through the year, through the month. Try and uh, memorize it entirely. Yes, I'm tempted to give those sorts of exercises, but maybe not now. But I encourage you to do it personally. Memorize and study. one must study these scriptures must study the scriptures so i'm going to read for you psalm 139 says oh lord you have searched me and known me oh lord you have searched me and known me you know when i sit down and when i rise up you understand my thought from afar praise the lord praise the lord if we were to keep this um firmly fixed in our understanding when we pray our prayer would be you know it would run on the fuel of the holy spirit sometimes when we pray we we feel like we have to introduce the subject to god no god has to introduce the subject to you amen i hope you're getting it many times we we fall into these things these ideas that we have we think god is like us he's not like us he is god when you take a subject to him in prayer allow the holy spirit to teach you how to pray amen amen amen, amen. lord you have searched me and known me this is past tense lord you have searched me and known me it's done you know when i sit down and when i rise up you understand my thought from afar from afar he knew my thoughts is it's incredible isn't it this is the god we we serve this is the god that you are in a relationship with he knows you he knows exactly what you're thinking right now in verse 3 it says you scrutinize my path and my lying down praise the lord you scrutinize my path and my laying down we are very familiar with the latter part of the scripture you're intimately acquainted with all our ways but this the verse has a initial section which says you scrutinize me you scrutinize my path the word there means to winnow to filter you filter you sit i don't know how many of you have had the experience of filtering something recently i had to filter you know and i'm in the process of filtering some coconut oil and it's not a one day process is sometimes more than a single day it takes two days three days to get that uh, that filtering to for it to be completed that filtering process and here it says 
God you scrutinize. Well, some serious commitment. I mean, this commitment to, to getting pure coconut oil, for crying out loud, is like, a, is like a, almost a one and a half, two months commitment. If you don't know what I'm talking about, yeah, we can, we can speak later. It's an it's entire process where, you know, the coconut had to come down from the tree, had to be, go, go through a certain process of drying, had to be cut, chopped, and dried more. And it just keeps going. And, you, and it says, you scrutinize. God is committed. God is committed. God is committed. He, he is so committed to you that the scripture says he filters. He filters you. Scrutinizes your path and your lying down. He is intimately acquainted with all my, you are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, oh Lord, you know it. I love the construction. Understand the construction. Before a word is on my tongue, oh Lord, behold, oh Lord, you know it. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain it. Oh, glory to God. May the Spirit of God make you realize that it is no small thing that you encountered Jesus. It is no small thing that you have encountered Jesus. Sometimes our understandings of Scripture need to be refreshed, need to be... Yeah, you need to just put it... And, and allow the Spirit of God to just touch your perspective. I mean, if I were to speak to you about the first five books of the law, many people have enclosed it or sort of, all of you know the first five books of the law, or, or the, it's called the Torah or the law, the Pentateuch, the first five books. And people have enclosed it. If you say that the, the first five books, or you mention the Torah, the first thing that comes to our mind is the law. True? Generally speaking, that's the first thing that comes to our mind. The law. But what we need to understand is, it is a story of God's working with us. It is a story of God working with us. God creating ripples in history as he, as he enters, as he, as, he, as he starts the salvation story. And the law is under that. I hope you get this. The law is under that. Under what? The fact that God is initiating relationship. God is initiating a work, a story of salvation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why David, and you, you read the Psalms, and you read the Old Testament, you cannot, ex you cannot escape the fact that these people of God realized that the Lord had entered their life. The law was given, the law was given in the story of God's relationship with us. Praise the Lord. Which language was it given in? Which language was it given in? You know the answer. Yes, some of you are saying the answer. You know the answer. It's, a, it's an obvious answer. What language was it given in? It was given in the Hebrew language. And I heard a wonderful Bible teacher, uh, he, he spoke about this fact and he said, this is not cheap. It underlines the fact that it is not cheap. If you wanted to understand the law, you had to study the language, not English. You had to understand the language, Hebrew. I'm talking about at that time. Today, one of the things that plague the church is we've become very lukewarm about this what has happened with us jesus came into your life one day is a historic moment you know we've gotten so used to history class in school that uh, we only think the historical people are the ones that we study about in history lessons in in school you are the historic people Yes, they form a part of human history. You form a par part of divine history. 
Today I pray that you find it a little difficult to go to sleep. Not because you are afraid or any of those reasons, but you find it difficult to sleep because you are a superstar in the story of God. I remember once sharing in a church in Bangalore and uh, one of the things, exercises that I, I tell people to do quite often is to turn to each other and uh, you know, repeat something that was said. <coughs> and uh, that, that church was not very familiar with this or probably was little, came to a place where it stigmatized a bit. And he asked me, why do you do this? I said, so that it, it hits home. And I'm looking at the, the, the crowd or the precious people of God that are here this evening. I want you to turn to the person next to you. You're a superstar in the story of God. Yes. You know how we, you know, we scramble over each other. Sometimes we, we, we are so fascinated by the superstars of Hollywood or Bollywood or whatever is your fancy. When you don't realize, my dear believer, you are superstars in God's story. Praise the Lord. You have enclosed me. Verse 5 says, you have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too. It is too high. I cannot. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm looking at people. I'm looking at the church at the people that will rub shoulders with ones such as Moses and Elijah, you're rubbing shoulders with them. You are ones that are seated in the heavenly places with the Son of God. <laughs> the <laughs> you must break free from the mirror in your house and embrace the mirror that's God's word. Embrace the mirror that's God's word. God has enclosed you behind and before has laid his hand upon you such knowledge is too wonderful for me it is too high i cannot attain to it this evening i just want to share a short testimony about uh, someone that god brought into into our lives this person passed away today morning and i examined the past 14 or 15 years that i've known her and uh, you know, uh, she worked at our house. And all I see is the grace of God. I am so impressed, so... I'm impressed, flabbergasted, I'm amazed at the grace of God that brought her into our lives. And I remember many opportunities of ministry that that I found comfort when I left my family at home and I had to travel. I remember such comfort I took in knowing that this person was at home with, you know, with my children, with, with Sharon. And we received so much grace and strength from her because she, she was a person that had compassion and had a strong love for truth. Praise God. I mean, she'd be worried about uh, the people in her neighborhood. If there's some extra food, she'd think about the widow down the street um, from her house. She would, uh, if, if a dog or a cat appeared, she'd be concerned about them also. Uh, she was worried about her people in her family. She was a person burdened about these things. And a person who, who con constantly was looking for how she can do something for somebody else. Praise the Lord. You know, and that reminded me of, of what we are studying and uh, how Jesus starts his, his ministry by saying, Blessed are the merciful, they shall receive. Praise the Lord. And uh, um, she, she was a person who showed mercy. Now, uh, she passed today morning around, uh, I don't know, maybe four months ago or so, we had the opportunity to share the gospel with her. Praise God. And she received the gospel with tears in her eyes. She accepted Jesus into her life with tears in her eyes. She confessed her sins and accepted the Lord. Why don't you give the Lord a hand? Praise God. Give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God is faithful. God is faithful.
What can I say? Before a word was in my mouth, the Lord provided this servant of God. Yes. And I want you to know, I was sharing with Sharon today, all around us are evidences of the presence of God in our life. All around us are the evidence of the great grace, love of God. It's all around us. Do not be people who are not aware. I want to encourage you, do not be people that are not aware. We can get so wound up. Today you heard about correction, the Holy Spirit's correcting you. We can be so filled with complaining and, and we can be so distracted by momentary light afflictions. But God has enclosed you behind and before. He has laid his hand upon you. I want you to know you are... You are a person that God is scrutinizing. He knows you're getting up, you're lying down. He provides for everything. Praise the Lord. He provides. He has surrounded you with his goodness. I don't know if there is someone here feeling some sort of bitterness or some sort of confusion about God's provision for you. I want to remind you this evening, the Lord is good and he does good. The Lord is good. Can you say it with me? The Lord is good. And he does good. He's laid his hand upon you. And he has surrounded you with his mercy. Praise the Lord. He has surrounded you with his mercy. He's a good God. He will accomplish his purpose in your life. Praise the Lord. If you, if you are where God wants you to be, it's the best place to be. Somebody say amen. I'd rather be where God wants me than any other place. I don't want to be anywhere else. I want to be where God wants me to be. That's the best place to be. And uh, there is great comfort that the Lord wants to, to uh, shed to his church this evening. Comfort and encouragement. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.